Section zero of the Sonnets from the Crimea. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Piotr Naper. Sonnets from the Crimea by Adam Mickiewicz. Translated by Edna Underwood. Section one. Introduction. Adam Mickiewicz. A biographical sketch. Adam Mickiewicz. 1798-1855. The last of the 18th century was an important period for Russia and Poland, not only politically, but in letters in art. It marked the birth of statesmen, patriots, poets, and writers. It was into a Poland of great names and greater activities that Adam Mickiewicz was born in 1798, as son of an impoverished family of the old nobility. Three years before the third and last partition of his native land had taken place, and the signed documents had been hastened to Petersburg to make more triumphant the birthday of the great Catherine. Just a few years before this, in 1792, Kostyushko had courageously led his 45,000 valiant Poles in their brave defiance of the overwhelming number of Cossacks and Russians. History had recorded the bloody Turkish wars, the Pugachev rebellion, the uprising of the Zaporozhian Cossacks and the Polish confederations. And with the 19th century came the Napoleonic Wars with the dramatic entry of the Napoleon into Russia, and a new and different mental life began to dawn over Europe. Mickiewicz was born in Novogrudek in Lithuania. This was the birthplace of Count Henry Zawuski, who wrote the delightful memories of the Polish 18th century, under the title of The Memories of Pan Severin Soplica, and who declared he considered it an honor to be born a Szlachcic, noble, of Lithuania, and of Novogrudek. Footnote. The full title of the book is Memories of Pan Severin Soplica, Cup Bearer of Parnow, by Count Henry Zawuski. End of footnote. He went to a government school in Minsk, and later attended the University of Vilna, which city in his day was a place of Jesuit faith, gloomy convents, and echoing bells. All about him epoch-making events for Slav lands were taking place. It was the resounding, inspired age for his race, and he grew up to take a fitting place in that age and to be called the immortal hero of Polish poetry. Poland just then was the battleground not only for the armies of Europe, but for the diplomats. It was a place for statesmen to win their spurs. If accredited to Petersburg or Warsaw and successful, they were believed to be equal to any diplomatic emergency. Eloquence, inspiration, and patriotic fervor must have cradled his childhood. At the time of the birth of Mickiewicz, Russia was bringing to a close a prodigious period of development in almost every field of human activity. It was really a birth throw of a nation that was to move powerfully and to dominate, partially, the new age. And the splendid and never again to be equaled pageant of the life of Catherine the Great, with its wild dreams of world dominance and the glorious revival of perished Greece, had just been unrolled for the amazement of Europe. What dramatic and enchanting memories the names of her followers call up. The Orlovs, Potemkin, Panin, Poniatowski, Bestushev Rumin, Princess Dashkov, Razumovsky. In France, too, the same preceding period had been brilliant. It had been the France of Voltaire, the Encyclopedists, and the most resplendent and luxurious monarch. England had known her greatest orators and prime ministers. It had been the Prussia of Frederick the Great, the Dresden of August the Strong, the Austria of Joseph II. A little later, during Mickiewicz's own youth, Goethe was at the height of his power and the intellectual dictator of Europe. Under his direction and encouragement, the treasures of Oriental literature were being translated and made known to the West. This is merely a hasty glimpse of the mise-en-scene that preceded the debut in life of the most renowned of Polish poets. The old traditions of absolute and God-created monarchs at princely times were coming to an end, and that democratic modern world, where everything was to change, was close at hand. Just over the crest, indeed, of this new century into which fate was ushering him. He was to see the last of the blind power and royal prerogative, and the first dawn of a modern spirit which in time would sweep away forever the old. It was an uncertain, difficult transition period, without standards and without measurements. As we take a fleeting bird's-eye view of the stirring times in which his days were spent, his travels, his army life, his periods of professorship, we cannot but wonder at the amount of writing Mickiewicz did. And his life was not a long one. It did not reach to sixty years. 
but during the working years allotted him before the mystical melancholy which was threatening to de degenerate into madness had impaired his faculties his mind was unusually brilliant creative and marvelously disciplined it obeyed at will at one time he was professor of latin in Lausanne. at another time he held the chair of slavic languages in paris he taught polish and latin in kovno he travelled extensively in italy in the interest of the polish revolution his mind was many-sided and capable of various activities he devoted considerable time to advanced mathematics and philosophy he made scientific investigations in vilna under le level at one time and another he lived in various large cities of europe in germany he met and became friends with goethe in switzerland he met krasinski in eighteen thirty three he married selina Szymanowska. Her mother was the famous Slav beauty and musician who had so delighted Goethe in her youth. Among writers of Russia and Poland whose life periods somewhat coincided with that of Mickiewicz's are Korzeniowski, born 1797, the novelist, a brother of Adam Mickiewicz was fellow teacher with Korzeniowski at Harkov, Danilewski, 1829, likewise a novelist, it was he who translated the Crimean sonnets into Russian, Malczewski, Polish patriot and poet whose Maria, perhaps the most popular poetic story in Poland, appeared at almost the same time as the Crimean sonnets. Zaleski, 1802, Słowacki, 1809, Kaczynski, 1812, the three greatest poets of Poland, excepting only Mickiewicz himself, the Polish critic Brodziński. In Russia, the golden age of literature almost covered the same period as Mickiewicz's own life. Pushkin, Lermontov, Szukowski, Gogol, to mention only some of the most important names. In the 1830s we find Mickiewicz in Paris, which happened to be filled with just then with a crowd of brilliant Slavic exiles. Here he became the friend of Chopin, and one of Chopin's most talented pupils, a young Polish girl, made the first translation of the sonnets into French. It was a wonderful and brilliant Paris which Mickiewicz entered. This was the time when the city was first called the stepmother of genius. Heine was there in exile, and Bern. It knew the personal fascination and the denunciative writings of Ferdinand Lassalle. It was the day, too, of Eugène Sue, Berlioz, Georges Sand, de Musset, Dumas, Gautier, the Goncourt brothers, Gavarni, saint beuve Licht, Felix Mendelssohn, Ari Schaeffer, Delacroix, Horace Vernet, to mention only a few great names at random. Juliusz Słowacki, Count Krasinski, and Adam Mickiewicz were all here editing their poetry in the midst of the brilliant life of the inspiring city by the Seine. The spirit in Paris signs perhaps the high watermark of the creative genius of Mickiewicz. He had already written the ballads and romances, the third part of Jade, Pantadeusz. The Crimean sequence belongs to the period of Mickiewicz's youth, the Vilna period. He joined a society at this time, which was looked upon with disfavor by the government. At length, because of his continued participation in it, he was exiled to southern Russia. On that trip, while he was going towards Odessa, he began the Crimean sonnets. Their success was quick and astonishing. They were translated into every language of Europe. Although the form is the traditional and classic sonnet form, he makes use of it in a slightly different manner not altogether as an exposition of the sentiments of the soul and the convictions and emotions of the mind, but as an instrument with which to sketch what he saw upon this eventful journey. He used the sonnet form at that period just as Verheyen used it in Le Flamand to show us Flanders, and as Albert Samel in Le Chariot d'Or to picture the gardens of Versailles. This is worthy of note, and this, we must remember, was before 1826, in the poetical works of Mickiewicz there was also traceable an inclination to break tradition and to search for new and untried possibilities. On this exile in Russia he learned to know Pushkin, then a young man like himself. Pushkin has written a verse letter to him which he transcribed in free prose. He lived among us for a while, a people strange to him, and yet his mind cherished no hatred and no longing for revenge. Generous, kind of heart, noble-minded, he joined our evening circles, and we loved him. We exchanged our dreams, our plans, our poems. God gave him genius and inspiration. He stood always on the heights and looked down on life. We talked of history and of nations. He declared a time would come when races would forget all evil things, like war, rebellion, and dwell together peaceably in one great family. We listened to him eagerly, for he had the gift of speech. After a while he went away, and we gave our blessing to him, 
then we learned our guest, spurred on by his revengeful race, had become our enemy. To please the bitter race of his, he filled his songs with hatred. Of our beloved friend there came to us only revenge and angry thoughts. God grant that peace may come again to his embittered heart. Pushkin himself wrote eloquently of the same Crimean scene that Mitskevich shows us. He too was inspired by the old capital city of the Tartar rulers. We recall his Fountain of Bakshi Serai, and he too brings before our eyes again that gigantic mountain world of southern Russia in the prisoner of the Caucasus. The fame of the Crimean sonnets was so great that Mitskevich was offered the government position which attached him to the person of a powerful Prince Galitsyn in Moscow. It was in Rome, and singularly enough it was when he wrote The Ode to Youth, that he began to devote himself to mystical studies which had such an injurious effect upon his mind. For some time after he had lost his fluent power as a poet, he retained his conversational gifts, which were remarkable and brought him almost as much fame as his poetry. His life ended in a period as dramatic as that in which it began. He entered the Turkish wars in 1855 and died in Istanbul in the same year. It is somewhat peculiar and at the same time no little to his credit that he should have chosen the sonnet as the instrument of his quick sketching of Crimea on the trip of exile because the sonnet has never been a frequently chosen means of expression of the Slav races, despite numerous sonnets written later by Verklitsky, Preseren, and others. The sonnet had belonged more to the Latin races and to the English race. The Crimean sonnets, however, rang among the famous sequences. Edna Werfley Underwood End of section 1Rozdział pierwszy z książki Sonety Krymskie. Nagranie LibriVox. Wszystkie nagrania LibriVox należą do domeny publicznej. Więcej informacji o nagraniach lub wolontariacie na stronie LibriVox.org. Czyta Piotr Nater. Adam Mickiewicz. Sonety Krymskie. Rozdział pierwszy. Wer den Dichter will verstehen, muss den Dichter z Lande gehen. Goethe im Hult Namech. Towarzyszą podróży krymski autor. Sonnets from the Crimea by Adam Mickiewicz. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please contact LibriVox.org. Sonnets from the Crimea by Adam Mickiewicz. English translation by Edna Worthley Underwood. Read by Algy Pug. Stepy Akermańskie Wpłynąłem na suchego przestwór oceanu. Wóz nurza się zieloność jak łódka brodzi. Wśród fali łąk szumiących, wśród kwiatów powodzi, omijam koralowe ostrowy burzanu. Już mrok zapada, nigdzie drogi nie kurchanu. Patrzę w niebo, gwiazd szukam, przewodnicze głodzi. Tam z dala błyszczy obłok, tam jutrzenka wschodzi. To błyszczy Dniestr, to weszła lampa Ackermanu. Stójmy, jak cicho. Słyszą ciągnące żurawie, których by nie dościgły źrenice sokoła. Słyszą, kędy się motyl kołysa na trawie, kędy wąż śliską piersią dotyka się zioła. W takiej ciszy, tak ucho natężam ciekawie, że słyszałbym głos z Litwy. Jedźmy, nikt nie woła. The Ackerman Step Across sea meadows measureless I go my wagon sinking under grasses so tall the flowery petals in foam on me fall and blossom isles float by i do not know no pathway can the deepening twilight show i seek the beckoning stars which sailors call and watch the clouds what lies there brightening all the denysters the steppe ocean's evening glow the silence i hear far flight of cranes so far the eyes of eagle could not reach, and bees and blossoms speaking each to each, the serpents slipping adown grassy lanes. From my far home, if word could come to me, yet none will come. On o'er the meadow sea. Cisza morska. Na wysokości tarkan kut. Już w stążkę pawilonu wiatr zaledwie muśnie, cichami gra piersiami rozjaśniona woda. Jak marząca o szczęściu narzeczona młoda, zbudzi się, aby westchnąć i wnet znowu uśnie. 
Żagle, na kształt chorągwi, gdy wojnę skończono, drzemią na masztach nagich. Okręt lekkim ruchem kołysa się, jak gdyby przykuty łańcuchem. Majtek wytchnął, podróżne rozśmiało się grono. O morze, pośród twoich wesołych żyjątek jest polip, co śpi nad nim, gdy się niebo chmurzy, a na ciszę długimi wywija ramiony. O myśli, w twojej głębi jest hydra pamiątek, co śpi w pośród złych losów i namiętnej burzy, a gdy serce spokojne zatapia w nim szpony. Becalmed. The flag is listless, limp. It dances not. As deep the sea breathes from a gentle breast as any bride who dreams at love's behest, and wakes and sighs, then casts with dreams her lot. Sails hang upon the masts, useless, forgot like folded standards which the warriors rest and bring home, broken from the battle's crest. The sailors rest them in some sheltered spot. O sea, within your unknown deeps concealed, when storms are wild, your monsters dream and sleep, and all their cruelty for the sunlight keep. Thus, soul of mine, in your sad deeps concealed, the monsters sleep, when wild are storms. They start from out some blue sky's peace to seize my heart. Widok gór ze stepów Kozłowa Pielgrzym i Mirza Pielgrzym Tam? Czy Allah postawił w poprzek morze lodu? Czy aniołom tron odlał z zamrożonej chmury? Czy diwy z ćwierci lądu dźwignęli te mury, aby gwiazd karawanę nie puszczać ze wschodu? Na szczycie jaka łuna, pożar cerogrodu. Czy Allah, gdy noc chyla rozciągnęła bury, dla światów żeglujących po morzu natury tę latarnię zawiesił wśród niebios obwodu? Mirza. Tam? Byłem. Zima siedzi. Tam dzioby potoków i gardła rzek widziałem pijące z jej gniazda. Tchnąłem? Z ust mych śnieg leciał. Pomykałem kroków. Gdzie orły dróg nie wiedzą, kończy się chmur jazda. Minąłem grom drzemiący w kolebce z obłoków, aż tam, gdzie nad mój turban była tylko gwiazda. To czatyrdach, pielgrzym. A. Mountains from the Keslov step. Pilgrim. What would great Allah with the frozen sea? Would he of icy clouds a throne carve bright, or would the demons of the deepest night a bar build where the shining stars sweep free? It gleams like pagan cities fired, kings flee. When day was anciently destroyed by night, Did Allah amid chaos fix this light to guide the star worlds of eternity? Mirza, up there I've journeyed where the winter reigns, and seen the rivers bitten black like lines, on Tachir Dag, where the white cloud reclines, which not the wildest eagle's shadow stains, where cradled under me the thunders sleep, and Allah and the stars their watches keep. Bakczy Saraj Jeszcze wielka, już pusta girajów dziedzina. Zmiatane czołem baszów, ganki i przedsienia, sofy, trony potęgi, miłości schronienia, przeskakuje szarańcza, obwija gadzina. Skroś okiem różnofarbnych powoju roślina, wdzierając się na głuche ściany i sklepienia, zajmuje dzieło ludzi w imię przyrodzenia i pisze Balsazara głoskami ruina. W środku sali wycięte z marmuru naczynie, to fontanna haremu, dotąd stoi cało, i perłowe łzy sącząc woła przez pustynię. Gdzież jesteś, o miłości, potęgo i chwało? Wy macie trwać na wieki, źródło szybko płynie. O hańbo, wyście przeszły, a źródło zostało. Bakci Sarai In ruin are the spacious, splendid halls, With frozen forest of white columns, Where the Tatar Khan his palace builded fair, Where loneliest the shrilling cricket calls. The ivy blackens over shining walls, inscribing in gigantic letters there some curse Belshazzar-like. Beware, beware! Then black as crepe from crested columns falls. Within the burnished banquet rooms there sings the fountain of the harem, pure and clear, just as of old it sang in twilight's drear, but with a love and fame speed. On what wings? When all things else must perish, these endure. Yet both are gone. The fountain ripples pure. 
Bakczysaraj w nocy. Rozchodzą się z Dżamidów pobożni mieszkańcy. Odgłos Izamu w cichym gubi się wieczorze. Zawstydziło się licem rubinowym zorze. Srebrny król nocy dąży spocząć przy kochance. Błyszczą w haremie niebios wieczne gwiazd gagańce. Śród nich po safirowym żegluje przez tworze jeden obłok. Jak senny łabędź na jeziorze, pierś ma białą, a złotem malowane krańce. Tu cień pada z menaru i wierzchu cyprysa. Dalej czernią się kołem olbrzymy granitu, jak szatany siedzące w dywanie eblisa pod namiotem ciemności. Niekiedy z ich szczytu budzi się błyskawica i pędem farisa przelatuje, milczące pustyni błękitu. Bakci Sarai by night From out the mosques the pious wend their way Museum voices tremble through the night Within the sky the pallid king of light Wraps silvered ermine round him while he may And heaven's harem greets its star array One lone white cloud rests in the azure height A veiled court lady in some sorrow's plight whom cruel love and day have cast away. The mosques stand there, and here tall cypress trees, there mountains towering, black as demons frown, which Lucifer in rage from God cast down, like sword blades lightning flickers over these, and on an Arab steed the wild Khan rides, who goes to Bakchisarai, which night hides. Grób Potockiej W kraju wiosny, pomiędzy rozkosznemi sady, uwiędłaś młoda różo. Na przeszłości chwile, ulatując od ciebie jak złote motyle, rzuciły w głębi serca pamiątek owady. Tam na północ ku Polsce świecą gwiazd gromady. Dlaczegoż na tej drodze błyszczy się ich tyle? Czy wzrok twój, ognia pełen, nim zgasł w mogile, tam wiecznie lecąc jasne powypalał ślady? Polko, i jadni skończą w samotnej żałobie. Tu niech mi gastkę ziemi dłoń przyjazna rzuci. Podróżni często przy twym rozmawiają grobie i mnie w ten czas dźwięk mowy rodzinnej ocuci. I wiesz samotną piosenkę dumając o tobie, ujrzy bliską mogiłę i dla mnie zanuci. The grave of Countess Potocka In spring of life and love my Polish rose you faded and forgot the joy of youth. Bright butterfly, it brushed you then left ruth of bitter memory that stings and glows. O oh, stars, that seek a path my Northland knows, how dare you now on Poland shine forsooth, when she who loved you and lent you her youth sleeps where beneath the wind the long grass blows. Alone, my Polish rose, I die like you. Beside your grave a while, pray, let me rest with other wanderers at some grief's behest. The tongue of Poland by your grave rings true. High-hearted, now a young boy past it goes. Of you it is he sings, my Polish rose. Mogiły Haremu Mirza do pielgrzyma Tu z winnicy miłości niedojrzałe grona wzięto do stół Allaha. Tu perełki wschodu z morza uciech i szczęścia porwała za młodu truna koncha wieczności, dobrocznego łona. Skryła je niepamięci i czasu zasłona. Nad niemi turban zimny błyszczy wśród ogrodu, jak buńczuk wojska cieniów. I ledwie u spodu zostały dłonią gaura wyryte imiona. O wyróże edeńskie, u czystości stoku odkwitnęły dni wasze pod wstydu liściami, na wieki zatojone niewiernemu oku. Teraz grób wasz spojrzenie, co z ziemca plami, pozwalam mu, Darujesz o wielki proroku. Od jeden z cudzoziemców poglądał ze łzami. The graves of the harem. They sleep well here, whom Allah loved and kept and treasured in his vineyard fair and fine, most lustrous of the orient pearls that shine, which youth found where the waves of passion swept. Here, where in peace perpetual they have slept, a turban beckons where the roses twine, a banner flutters out in silken line, and sometimes here a giaul's name is kept. O oh, roses of this paradise of old, the eyes that loved not Allah saw you not, nor arms that prayed not eastward could enfold. But now a Christian treads this hallowed spot, wise Allah, curse not him who bows his head, 
amid the marble shrines of Allah's dead. Bajdary Wypuszczam ja wiatr konia i nie szczędzę razów. Lasy, doliny, głazy, w kolei, w natłoku, u nóg mych płyną, giną jak fale potoku. Chcę odurzyć się, upić tym wirem obrazu. A gdy spieniony rumak nie słucha rozkazów, gdy świat kolory traci pod całunem mroku, jak w rozbitym zwierciadle, jak w spiekłym oku snują się mary lasów i dolin i głazów. Ziemia śpi, mnie snu nie ma, skaczą w morskie łona. Czarny wydęty bałwan sukiem na brzeg dąży, z chlamku nie mu czoło, wyciągam ramiona. Pęka nad głową fala, chaos mię okrąży. Czekam, aż myśl, jak łódka wirami kręcona, zbłąka się i na chwilę w niepamięć pogrąży. Bye, daddy. Give wings unto the storm and spurs to steed. I'd move unchained as wind across the world, sweep onward like a torrent mountain hurled, nor sea, nor height, nor valley pause to heed. The twilight spreads a dimness o'er our speed, and shows the diamond stars from hoofs up whirled. Since daylight now her curtain blue has juried, and mystery and magic shadows breed. The earth sleeps, but not I, not I, not I, who hasten to the shore where waves are loud, and toward me in the darkness whitely crowd. Beneath them I would still my soul's deep cry, like ships the whirlpools seize to drag to death. I'd plunge within the silence, sans thought, breath. Auszta w dzień Już góra z piersi mgliste otrząsa chylaty, Rannymi szumi na mazy mniwa złotogłosa. Kłania się las i sypie z majowego włosa Jak z różańca kalifów, rubin i granaty. Łąka w kwiatach, nad łąką latające kwiaty. Motyle różnofarbne, niby tęczy kosa. Baldakimem z brylantów okryły niebiosa. Dalej szarańcza ciągnie swój całą skrzydlaty. A kędy w wodach skała przygląda się łysa, W remorze i odparte z nowym szumem pędzi. W jego szumach gra światło jak w oczach tygrysa. Sroszą zwiastując burzę dla ziemskiej krawędzi. A na głębini fala lekko się kołysa i kąpią się w niej floty i stada łabędzi. Ulushta by day. The mighty mountain flings its mist veil down. With little flowers the gracious fields are bright. And from the forest colors flash to sight like gems that drop from off a caliph's crown. Upon the meadows settles shimmering down a band of butterflies in rainbow flight. Cicadas call and call in day's delight, and bees are dreaming in a blossom's crown. The waves beneath the cliff are thunder pale. Now upward, upward in their rage they rise, and tawny are their crests as tigers' eyes. The sun is focused on one white, far sail, and on blue shining deeps as smooth as glass, wherein slim cranes are shadowed as they pass. A łuszta w nocy. Rzeźwią się wiatry, dzienna wolnieje posucha. Na barki czotr dachu spada lampa światów. Rozbija się, rozlewa strumieniem szkarłatów i gaśnie. Błędny pielgrzym ogląda się, słucha, już góry poczerniały, w dolinach noc głucha. Źródła szemrzą, jak przez sen na łożu z bławatów, powietrze tchnące wonią, tą muzyką kwiatów mówi do serca głosem tajemnym dla ucha. Usypiam pod skrzydłami ciszy i ciemnoty. Wtem budzą mnie rażące meteoru błyski. Niebo, ziemię i góry oblał potop złoty. Nocy wschodnia. Ty na kształt wschodniej odaliski pieszczotami usypiasz, a kiedy snu bliski, ty iskrą oka znowu budzisz do pieszczoty. Alushta by night the drooping, weary day, night pushed aside. On Tachir Dag, the sullen sun and low paints phantom purple upon ancient snow, while forest ways within the wanderers hide. Night veils the mountains and the valleys wide. The thunderous brooks are dream-held, dulled and slow. Beneath the darkness, fragrant flowers blow, and rich leaf music clothes each valley side. Almost my waking eyes I dream held too, with gold a meteor marks the deep domed sky, and fountain like the fiery sparks float by. O oh, beauty of the eastern night, you woo my spirit like the odalisque, 
who held men captive till her kiss the dream dispelled. Czatyrdach. Mirza. Drżąc mu ślemin, całuje stopy twej opoki, maszcie krymskiego statku, wielki czatyrdachu, o minarecie świata, o gór pady szachu, ty nad skały poziomu, uciekłszy w obłoki, siedzisz sobie pod bramą niebios, jak wysoki Gabriel pilnujący edyńskiego gmachu. Ciemny las twoim płaszczem, a janczary strachu twój turban z chmur haftują błyskawic potoki. Nam czy słońce dopieka, czy mgła ocienia, czy sarańcza ploń zetnie, czy gaur pali domy, czy aterdachu, ty zawsze głuchy, nieruchomy. Między światem a niebem, jak drogman stworzenia, podesławszy pod nogi ziemię, ludzi, gromy, słuchasz tylko, co mówi Bóg do przyrodzenia. Sacir Dag Mirza. The reverend Mussulman bends low to greet you, Tachir Dag, Crimea's bright mastered ship, world altar, minaret, the place where dip down stairs from golden heaven for the feet. You guard the door of God in splendor meet, like Gabriel with holy sword on hip, in bright mist mantled from the toe to lip, your turban set with alien stars and sweet. If winter ruled the world, or summer's sun, if Giaul rage above, or winds are wild, above them, Tachir Dag, you, changeless one, are like to Allah, pure and undefiled. Aloft you tower from out the lowly sod, to give to men again the will of God. Pielgrzym U stóp moich kraina dostatków i krasy, nad głową niebo jasne, obok piękne lice. Dlaczegoż stąd ucieka serce w okolice dalekie i, niestety, jeszcze dalsze czasy? Litwo, piały mi wdzięczniej Twe szumiące lasy niż słowiki Bajdaru, Salchiry dziewice. I weselszy deptałem Twoje trzęsawice niż rubinowe morwy, złote ananasy. Tak daleki, tak różna wabi mi oponenta. Dlaczegoż roztargniony wzdycham bez ustanku do tej, którą kochałem w dni moich poranków? Ona w lubej dziedzinie, która mi odjęta. Gdzie jej wszystko o wiernym powiada kochanku. Depcąc świeże myślady, czyż on nie pamięta? Cacir Dag The pilgrim Beneath me half a world I see outspread Above blue heaven, around peaks of snow And yet the happy pulse of life is slow I dream of distant places, pleasures dead the woods of Lithuania I would tread, where happy-throated birds sing songs I know. Above the trembling marshland I would go, where chill-winged curlews dip and call o'erhead. A tragic, lonely terror grips my heart, a longing for some peaceful, gentle place, and memories of youthful love I trace. Unto my childhood home I long to start, and yet, if all the leaves my name could cry, she would not pause nor heed as she passed by. Droga nad przepaścią w Czufutkale. Mirza i pielgrzym. Mirza. Zmów pacierz, opuść wodze, odwróć na bok lica. Tu jeździec końskim nogom swój rozum powierza. Dzielny koń, patrz jak staje, głąb okiem rozmierza. Uklęka, brzeg wiszaru kopytem pochwyca. I zawisnął. Tam nie patrz. Tam spadła źrenica, jak w studni Al-Kairu, od dno nie uderza. I ręką tam nie wskazuj, nie masz rąk pierza. I myśli tam nie puszczaj, bo myśl jak kotwica. Z łodzi drobnej ciśniona w niezmierność głębiny piorunem spadnie, może do dna nie przewierci. I łódź z sobą przechyli w otchłanie chaosu. Pielgrzym. Mirzo, a ja spojrzałem. Przez świata szczeliny tam widziałem, co widział opowiem, po śmierci. Bo w żyjących języku nie ma na to głosu. The pass across the abyss in a shufut kale. Mirza. Pray, pray, let loose the bridle, look not down. The humble horse alone has wisdom here. He knows where blackest the abysses leer, and where the path in safety leads us down. Pray, and look upward to the mountain's crown. The deep below is endless where you peer. Stretch not the hand out as you pass, for fear the added weight of that might plunge you down. And check your thoughts free flight, too, while you go. 
Let all of fancy's fluttering sails be furled here, where death watches o'er the riven world. Pilgrim I lived to cross the bridge of ancient snow, but what I saw my tongue no more can tell, the angels only could rehearse that well. Gura Kikineis Mirza Spojrzyj w przepaść. Niebiosa leżące na dole to jest morze. Wśród fali zda się, że ptak góra, piorunem zestrzelony, swe masztowe pióra roztoczył kręgiem szerszym niż tęczy półkole i wyspą śniegu nakrył błękitne wód pole. Ta wyspa żeglująca w otchłani to chmura. Z jej piersi na pół świata spada noc ponura. Czy widzisz poministą wstążkę na jej czole? To jest piorun, lecz stójmy, otchłanie pod nogą. Musimy wąwóz przesadzić w całym konia pędzie. Ja skaczę, ty z gotowym biczem i ostrogą. Gdy zniknę z oczu, patrzaj w owe skałka będzie. Jeśli tam pióro błyśnie, to mój kołpak będzie. Jeśli nie, już ludziom nie jechać tą drogą. Mirza. Behold blue heaven in that deep abyss. The sea is that. Behold the long waves shine. Watch how they rock that giant bird divine whose swinging white wings wide horizons kiss. Is that an iceberg in the blue abyss? No. No, a cloud. Watch how tis veiling fine the sea, the land, out blotting every line to drown it all in darkness soon, I wis. The lightning comes now, frightful is its sweep, but softly, softly, watch my spur, my whip, I leap across unto that chasm's lip, what still and chilling sternness great cliffs keep, down there light calls to me. Soon there I'll be, and can he is such loneliness to me. Ruiny zamków w Bałakławie Te zamki połamane, z walizka bez ładu, zdobiły cię i strzegły o niewdzięczny Krymie. Dzisiaj sterczą na górach jak czaszki olbrzymie, w nich gad mieszka lub człowiek podlejszy od gadu. Szczeblujmy na wieżycę, szukam herbów śladu, jest i napis, tu może bohatera imię, co było wojsk po strachem w zapomnieniu drzymie, obwinione jak robak liściem winogradu. Tu Grek dłutował w murach ateńskie ozdoby, stąd Italczyk mongołom narzucał żelaza i mekański przybylec nucił pieśń namaza. Dziś sępy czarnym skrzydłem oblatują groby, jak w mieście, które całkiem wybije zaraza. Wiecznie z baszt powiewają chorągwie żałoby. The ruins of Balaklava. O oh, thankless Crimean land, in ruin laid are now the castles that were once your pride. Here serpents and the owls from daylight hide, and robbers arm them for the nightly raid. Upon the lettered marble boasts are made, brave words on battered arms in gold descried, and broken splendor years have scattered wide, beside the dead who made them are arrayed. The Greek set shining columned marble here, the Latin put the Mongol horde to flight, and Mussulmans prayed eastward morn and night. The owl and vulture of dark wing and drear are fluttering like black banners overhead, in cities where the pest piles high the dead. A Judach Lubię poglądać wsparte na Judachu skale, jak spienione bałwany to w czarne szeregi ścisnąwszy się buchają, to jak srebrne śniegi w milionowych tęczach kołują wspaniale. Trącą się o mieliznę, rozbijają na fale, jak wojsko wielorybów zalegając brzegi. Zdobędą ląd w triumfie i na powrót zbiegi miecą ze sobą muszle, perły i korale. Podobnie na Twe serce, o poeto młody, namiętność często groźny wzburzenie pogody. Lecz gdy podniesiesz bardon, ona bez twej szkody ucieka w zapomnienia pogrążyć się toni i nieśmiertelne pieśni za sobą uroni, z których wieki uplotą ozdobę swych skroni. On Judas Cliff On Judas Cliff I love to lean and look on waves at battling beat and break with might, while far the seaward in a bland delight I see them shining where a rainbow shook. On Judas Cliff I love to lean and look on waves that like sea armies swing to sight, to send upon the shore their billows white, and ebbing to leave pearls in every nook. 
thus poet in your youth when storms are wild and passions break upon the heart and brain to leave their ruin there shipwreck and waste pick up your lute upon it undefiled you find song pearls that your heart deeps retain the crown the years have brought you white and chaste here then in the Crimean sonnets of the immortal hero of Polish poetry, Adam Mickiewicz, as translated by Edna Worthley Underwood, and published by Paul Elder and Company at the Tamoe Press, in the city of San Francisco, under the direction of Ricardo J. Orozco, their printer during the month of August 1917. Konietz Sonnet of Grimskich End of Sonnets from the Crimea